Welcome to our inaugural episode of Casting Code. In these variety of screencasts, we'll be doing all kinds of programming, ranging from basic programming in something like Xcode for iOS, for the Mac or for the iPad, as well as for uh, doing Ruby on Rails, Ruby coding, Python coding, and just about anything else that comes to mind. For this first episode, though, we're going to start by having a look at a quick project in Objective-C and this particular one will use the Xcode interface to create a basic iOS application and just discuss a handy feature that's been added into the Objective-C language, as well as looking at one of the ways that you can use the Assistant Editor to make your life so much easier when creating linkages into your code. So I'll get started with just a single view application, and I'm going to call it Sample Properties, and the reason for that will become apparent as we go on. Now for this particular demonstration, we're not going to get into storyboards, though in later episodes we'll take a look at storyboards and the different transitions you can do, as well as, and uh, not just the regular segues, but the rewind segues that were added in with iOS 6. So let's get this one started here. It'll just be a basic application. Start that right up. And just to give us a little bit of a target to head for, over a series of several episodes, we're going to take a look at building a simple application here that's going to allow us to enter numbers into a decimal field and automatically get those to be converted into other number formats, uh, octal, hexadecimal, maybe even binary. As the application evolves, we're going to see about solving several different coding challenges as we go and slowly but surely add more and more features to this application. Of course, we will cover other things as well, so we may stop and start coming back to this application occasionally. To get us started, though, we know that we're going to need a label to indicate where our decimal value is, so let me just call that decimal value. That'll be next to our text field, and I'll drag one of those out as well. And if you're very new to uh, coding using Xcode, you'll find that using Xcode is extremely easy much easier than most of the other visual interfaces I've used on other platforms. So I'm just going to do a little bit of reformatting here, and I'm really just about ready to go. Now, I'm going to scoot this out of the way just because I'm trying to do these recordings on a uh, sort of a smaller setting to make sure that you can see everything that's happening. Um, I may actually change that in the future, but for now we'll go with the 1024 by 768. And with that little screen real estate, I really do need to be kind of efficient with what I do here. So I'm going to scoot all of that stuff out of the way for now and bring up the Assistant Editor. Now in the past, if you have done any uh, iOS coding, then you are probably familiar with the notion of needing to create properties in order to define the instance variables or the, the connections, the properties, the external interfaces that will reference instance variables within your actual objects here and your controllers. And while I can still do that, I could still create a weak, non-atomic, I could do all of that stuff here, and I'll call it a decimal value, let's say. No problem. Oh, and I need to specify a type there, of course. And this is going to be, oh, okay, so I have to go back. And, and see, there's time involved here. I'd have to go and find out that that is actually a UI text field. That's what that is. And there we are. So I now have a property. And then to use that property, I could actually click and drag over to that property to make the connection though it has gotten much easier than that. And the same goes for creating action connections. So let me pull that connection out of there and instead approach it this way. Using the Assistant Editor, it gives you the opportunity to see interesting or useful things simultaneously. For instance, right now I'm looking at the interface view, the zip file, and it makes sense then to be looking at the, at the uh, uh, interface file that matches up to the view controller that handles that. And hence, that's what we see there on the, uh, the left-hand side. Now, what I'm also going to be interested in doing, though, is making these connections. And these two files do make sense to put next to each other, much like if I opened up the implementation file, it would again show me the header file. To make these connections, I could right-click, which will then show me the different things that can be connected. 
and I can still use the traditional way of pulling it over to files owner and then trying to make connections to things, or pulling from the files owner out to the text field in order to make connections that way. Though, with nothing else set, I can simply right click and then choose a connection or click and drag, right click and drag into the interface file, which will pop up this very handy box where I can now choose what kind of connection I'm trying to make. So one of the things that uh, personally I always was a little fuzzy about, I always make little mistakes, is which way I drag. If I'm making a, an action connection, if I'm making an outlet connection, which way do I go? Well, this takes all of the uh, concern out of that. You can just drag in one way. In this case, I'd like to create the property connection so that I have an instance variable to use over in my implementation, and I'm going to call it decimal value. There we are. And when I press enter, it creates everything I need. And you may already notice that when I had first typed mine, I actually forgot to put the IB outlet marker on it. So I would have been wrestling with figuring out why I couldn't make the connection. In any event, with that now set, Let's uh, move out of this, the, uh, that editor and back into the normal editor. And let's bring our view back up here so that I can see what's going on with my project and go over into the implementation file. Now, with the implementation file up, I could just edit it directly. But again, with that assistant editor, like I mentioned, it brings this up making it very easy to remember what the names of variables are, for instance, or what functions you had defined. By the way, we're not ready to use it yet, but let me also drag over an action connection here. And we'll call this, um, let's see, decimal value changed. How about that? Because we know eventually there is going to be some event that occurs when the value changes, and I can select here which one I'd like to use. And editing did end does seem like a good choice, which is the default. I click OK. It creates the IB action here, but if you notice, you'll see the implementation file has also been modified. The reason is that in the implementation file, it automatically adds in that function. So it really is taking a lot of work out of the way. Now let me show you the really specific things I wanted to mention that it takes out of the way with an adjustment to Objective-C. In the past, after looking at what your interface was here, particularly at this property and all of the properties you might have had, it would have been necessary to come into your implementation file and somewhere below the beginning of the implementation, you would have needed to synthesize all of these properties. So decimal value. Not very hard, there's only one of them. In fact, it was even very common practice to do something like this. So by doing this, the synthesize is creating this property decimal value that can now be referenced through this instance variable decimal value. So very, very handy. And of course, all of the setters and getters are automatically created. So very, very useful. Being able to automatically synthesize properties, though, that would be even better. In fact, that's what's changed. Let me pull this synthesize out and I want you to note what we can do now. I'm going to go down into the view did load function, which will be called right after the zip has been loaded up, the view created, and it's just about to be displayed on the screen. And I'd like to set the value that's going to show up in that text field. Now I said that we're going to use this project over several episodes and build a little uh, converter between different bases. So let me just add in another variable here that I'm going to find very useful soon. Let's create an unsigned integer that actually is an IVAR rather than a property. And it's going to be called, how about master value? Because all of the other fields are going to derive their value from that one. Within our function here, I can simply set that value to be zero. And now I'd like to populate that into the field. Now I'm going to turn off the assistant editor just to give us a little bit more screen real estate and let's see how we might do this. I said that we now have these automatically synthesized properties. What does that mean? Well, you might think that that means I could simply come in here and type decimal value and be able to set its value. 
And while you can see that I can do a set text on that, we actually are not really ready to go here. The reason is that when it synthesizes that variable, you'll notice it was not doing the auto completion here because that's not what was synthesized. The idea, the simplification, is that it does not make sense to create a property and not synthesize it, though of course it could be that you're simply overriding methods and so therefore didn't synthesize, and you can still do that of course. But since almost all the time we will synthesize the variable, it's automatically synthesized. And since good practice was to prefix that IVAR or that internal name that we'll use to reference that property with an underscore, well, that's what was synthesized. So this really does save a little bit of coding. And for instance, if you add a new property in, or if you're trying to synthesize a number of properties, I've got some, some objects that have 40 or 50 properties on them. And of course, if you forget to synthesize one, well, you're in for a bad time trying to track down exactly what's going on when you think you've already done it. It just takes all that legwork out of the way. So let's set the value, the text within that field, to be an NS string. And of course, I could just set this directly to be master or to be a zero, but we want to start doing it the right way. So I'm going to do an NS string, string with format. The format will be a decimal string, and the value is going to be coming from master value. Now, the only additional thing I'll do for testing right now is maybe change this to some other value so I can see whether or not it's working correctly. And I'm not going to make any other changes for this evening, uh, or at least for this episode, though in future episodes we will take a look at a lot more interesting features and a little bit more about how Objective-C works in addition to the internals of the iOS platform, Cocoa itself, and doing program on programming on all of the different Mac platforms. It has just finished uh, loading up here, and let me just restart that. You didn't get to see it yourself there, so where am I? I think it's this one here. Yes, you can see for yourself. Let's uh, kill that. And we'll just restart it. Oh, of course, it's not happy that it got killed that way. Let me restart the simulator. There we go. So it pops right up 100. No problem at all. Now, there will be some problems that we need to face, and it's one of the first things we're going to deal with in the next episode. Right now, if I enter a value here, if I click outside, if I hit enter, if I hit escape, that keyboard does not go away. And it's actually a pretty, pretty basic thing that many programmers new to iOS face. So in our next episode, we're going to take a look at how it is that you take care of getting that keyboard out of the way once you're done editing a text field. Thanks for listening tonight, and if you have suggestions or questions or challenges that you face with any kind of programming problem, please send them in, and we'll see if we can do a video for you.